Welcome to Atrium Health, Navicent Knows Health. I'm Cindy Busby and I'm here today with Dr. Abby Cruz. She's board certified in pediatrics and board certified in pediatric hematology and oncology. And today she's gonna to tell us about her practice in central Georgia. Dr. Cruz, thanks for being with me. Thank you for having me. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about what is the specialty of hematology and oncology? So hematology is where we treat kids with blood disorders and it mm -hmm. can be anything from something severe, such as a bone marrow failure, aplastic anemia, or having just an anemia, low blood counts that is due to iron deficiency. Mm -hmm. And how do parents normally find out that their child might have a blood disorder? So hopefully they find out from their pediatrician mm -hmm. when they get the, when you go to your regular well child checks. Unfortunately, sometimes it happens after surgery, a lot of bleeding happens, mm -hmm. or for girls that, you know, first time they have their periods, mm -hmm. it's a lot heavier than they expected. Mm -hmm. um, and then for some of our more severe ones, they actually happen through the newborn screen. Mm -hmm. So then the other side of your specialty, oncology, can you also define that too? And then we'll ask you some questions. <laughs> so oncology are unfortunately children who are diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. That would be blood or solid tumors. Um, and we treat anywhere from the age of 18 and younger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what was it then about uh, hematology and oncology that attracted you as a, your specialty? I liked the relationship that we got to make with families and parents. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people go into medical school or, medi or becoming a doctor because they want to help people. And the nice thing or the advantage of pediatric hematology oncology is I get to have a relationship with families and with patients. It's not just, oh, I see you for 10 minutes once a year, or you're quickly in through the ER. For me, at, unfortunately, at some of the hardest times in your life, we get to do life together. We get mm -hmm. to work together to make with the goal of your child getting better. And so that is the advantage I have of I get to, I get to really get to know my families and my patients. And unfortunately, sometimes they get to know me. <laughs> Well, so switching gears to hematology, let's talk a little bit about some of the conditions um, that you might treat more regularly than others. So one of the biggest one is sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is where it's a dysfunction of your red blood cells and they make it difficult to, well, they cause a lot of pain. They can cause damage to um, your organs. And so we treat with certain medicines, sometimes blood transfusions and managing that pain. Mm -hmm. And what is um, a normal visit like? So in terms of treatment, what are generalized treatments for sickle cell like when a patient's there with you? So for patients who have hemoglobin SS, which is the most severe type of sickle cell disease, um, they are often started on a medication called hydroxyurea. Mm -hmm. So they'll have to be monitored regularly, sometimes weekly to um, twice a month, or um, hopefully we get to monthly at some point. Mm -hmm. And that's just to maintain, to get their level um, to a stable place where hopefully they're not having pain every single day. Because mm -hmm. that's the unfortunate part about sickle cell disease is when those cells sickle or when they turn into those half moon shapes or those crescent shapes, they can all clog together and cause like a clog in your blood system. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a medicine for that. We also manage their pain. Um, if they have other complications, we give chronic blood transfusions and those happen about once every month. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about sickle cell, can you talk a little bit about the outreach that we're doing to Phoebe Putney with sickle cell? So one of the things that we have noticed, both for oncology and hematology, is that the more time families get to spend in their community, in their support group, and in a group that they know and are familiar with, the better children do, mm -hmm. because that's where their support is. Yes, we are there for them, and that's important, but it's also important that they be near home and have readily accessible health care. So one of the things that we have looked at is there is um, Phoebe Putney, which is about two hours away, mm -hmm. So we've actually started making a satellite clinic there where we, we actually go into the um, local area and we come in every, every other month for mm -hmm. now and then we do virtuals every other month but the clinic is still there so they can still get their labs, we can still have a conversation, there's a nurse there if there are any concerns about blood pressure, vital signs, they have people there to reach out and help them and then if they need to there's their ER readily available so that we can get the care that they need. And formerly they were coming to Macon yes, in so order to see. I see. They would have to drive all the way here. And the nice thing about Phoebe Putney is that means I can even reach far farther south to Georgia. Mm -hmm. So some of my patients are even farther south. They were having to drive three, four hours mm -hmm. to get to us, which sometimes when you just need to 
check labs and make sure that the liver's okay and that their hemoglobin is okay, mm -hmm. that's a long travel. That's you know three hours there and then three hours back for an hour visit. Mm -hmm. That takes up a lot of time away from school, away from family, away from work, and it just it wasn't practical for families. Mm -hmm. When it comes to treat, treating the oncology side, so can you tell us a little bit about, I know that that spectrum is probably very large, but when we're thinking about common conditions, conditions where children are able to stay in the community and being treated, what are the kinds of uh, conditions that you see maybe regularly? So the one, the most common type of childhood cancer is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Mm -hmm. So we do treat leukemia here. We treat several different types of cancers, you are correct. Um, and again, it's about giving quality care locally. So mm -hmm. we're also part of the children's oncology group mm -hmm. so that the kind of care that you're getting or the type of treatments that you would be getting in Atlanta or you get in Los Angeles or Austin, Texas or San Antonio, you can get that treatment here. Mm -hmm. And that way we make sure that we have the best treatments, the most up-to-date for our patients available. Again, leukemia is the most common type, so we start from the very beginning, from the day that you are diagnosed, you stay with us all for the about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So with the advent of telemedicine and, and even the relationship with Phoebe Putney, has that changed the way you manage oncology and hematology in the virtual visits uh, space as well? Not so much for oncology, although when a family calls me and they have a rash or something I can't see, it's kind of nice to be able to pop right, that right. visit and just, mm -hmm. when, they, when they do something, I'm like, can I just see that, that yes. rash or that bite? Right. Let's, <laughs> let's look at what that is. So that has made something a little bit easier instead of trying to figure out through the phone, so wait, what does that look like? What happened? Mm -hmm. But it has been really great for the hematology portion. Mm -hmm. Um, because then we can, after the first visit where we get to know each other and kind of they get to better understand what we do and what is happening, we can have those visits a lot easier or quicker. Um, again, when they're four hours away and I just need to have a conversation of how are they eating, how are they drinking, and again, I need to take a look at them, see if their eyes are a little yellow or, mm -hmm. you know, certain physical aspects, it's really nice to have that. Um, available and then families can call and be like I don't need a full visit or if they're sick mm -hmm. you know that was one of the things that was almost really difficult actually was if one family member is sick you can't bring the whole family into clinic because we are an immunocompromised clinic our patients mm -hmm. are at risk for infections and so it had the capability of okay everyone stays at home mm -hmm. stays quarantined stays safe but we could actually still have that meeting, still make sure that the kid is safe and that there's no issues going on. It also helped with our sickle cell population because there were concerns with COVID and mm. you know, with COVID causing a lot of lung problems, mm. that is something we are very concerned about for our sickle cell patients. And so we actually switched to virtual visits for them. Mm -hmm. When it was just their regularly scheduled, we just need to touch base, see how everything's going, see how the hydroxyurea is going. We were able to keep them safe during this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one final question. Um, we talk about pediatrics in this case, so we have children up until the age of 18. I'm sure with both of these conditions, you have to manage the transition of their care to the adult medicine world. So what is that, uh, what is some, you know, what's your perspective on, you've kept, you know, maybe watched a child throughout their life with sickle cell and then as they're 18 and they move into adult medicine to an adult hematologist, uh, what, what is that part that you manage? It's a little hard <laughs> because you have known them since they were little and now you have to let go and we're not always the best at that. <laughs> um, but it's often a transition of they're going to school, they're going to college. Mm -hmm. um, and so the preparation for that is teaching them how to be their own advocate. So for mm -hmm. sickle cell, from the time that they are able to talk, the importance is they need to be able to discuss with their providers because sometimes they'll be on vacation or outside of their home um, health system. Mm -hmm. And so we teach them what is, what exactly kind of sickle cell they have, mm -hmm. what their medicines are that they use, what they're allergic to. And so they've, they gain this acuity over time. Mm -hmm. And so by the time they're 18 and it's, or 21, <laughs> when it's time for them to move on, they need to be their best advocates. And that's one of the things that we really wanna impress on them and teach is how do you advocate for yourself? Mm -hmm. um, when you move into the older mm -hmm. <laughs> adult system. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes they still call just to, mm -hmm. 
Well, that's quite a relationship <laughs> after so many years. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for telling me so much about your practice. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us at Atrium Health Navicent Knows Health. If you'd like to know more about Dr. Cruz and her practice, please visit us at atriumhealthnavicent.org.